Hello guys, good afternoon. Welcome to your Wednesday Medieval Art History class with Miss Erica at HSC. How are you guys doing? Hi Jack, hi Lucy, hi Maya, hi Mimi. I sure do miss you guys all so much in class and I hope you're doing good. And I'm excited to be back here with you today. I'm very excited to start our Zoom classes next week and get to see all of your faces and see everything you've been working on. So um, today we are going to continue our seascapes following our chapters in your uh, Story of the World book, your Kingdom of Spain, uh, Henry, the Na Henry the Navigator. So we're gonna continue our sort of like dark, stormy, whimsical seascapes with um, our navigator and our sea creature kind of lurking through the waters coming up. So last week we did our backgrounds in watercolor. This is gonna be a mixed media piece. Last week we went in and did our kind of like stormy night sky and our sea where the horizon meets between the sky and the sea. So this week, we are going to continue on so to let you know everything that we need to need for today i'll go over the the um the materials list and everything that you guys will need for your setup so we need our watercolor palette like we used last week some different brushes i would recommend one at least one big brush one medium sized brush maybe like this or this hopefully you guys can see those um, and then one smaller brush for details so those three i have quite a few here but just those three will work one bigger one a medium and a smaller brush i would also get a pencil on hand because we're gonna go and sketch our little boat on the horizon our navigator and our sea creature in before we paint them in um, get an eraser just in case you need to like adjust anything you're going to need your cup of water for your watercolors and i also have well i have my paper towels and then i also need you guys to get some sort of a black paint we're not going to use the black watercolor paint we need some thicker black paint so any like acrylic or even ink if you guys have like india black india ink or acrylic paint would be best any brand doesn't matter um so as you can see, I have my watercolor palette, my brushes, my water, my picture. I put down a little plastic to keep my area like nice and covered so that I don't spill anything or get any paint on anything. I have my tissues. I also set up, this is optional, I set up a little palette here. You guys can use your watercolor tray or a paper plate or anything, but I put my black acrylic paint in this little dish. And I also put down some like blue, purple, a couple different purples and white, oh, Sorry, we are gonna, you are gonna need white as well. So black acrylic paint and white acrylic paint for our details. <clears throat> so I went and set up a separate palette here, but however you guys wanna set it up, that's fine. As long as you have your watercolors and a black acrylic paint and white acrylic paint, you will be good to go. Uh, I really am super excited to see what your backgrounds look like and what your creative take on this scene is and what you guys have imagined and what you've made. I really can't wait. So uh, I can't wait. Hope you're having fun with this project. And um, do you guys have any questions? What's your favorite part? <clears throat> so I think I'm just going to go ahead and jump right on in here. I, today we're going to start by, we're going to work on finishing our background, then we're going to work on middle ground and foreground, so our three layers to our picture and our composition. So to finish the background, I would actually like to go in with a wash of like a little bit more like blue and purple to kind of like add some color and some feels to the sky and just kind of I'm just going to go in and do a really light wash I'll explain it as I go over the whole thing to add some more color pop and then once we do that we're going to go in and we're going to add that's what we're going to use our white for we're going to add our stars in the sky then we're going to go in with our black 
and do the silhouette of our Voyager and our sea creature. But before we use the black marker, we're gonna go in and sketch it in to make sure that we have it where we want and that the size is good. Our Voyager is gonna be quite small because he's off in the distance. So it's all perspective, right? We wanna learn how to, that's, that's the key between the middle ground and the foreground. So our Voyager is kind of off in the distance sailing across the horizon. Our sea creature is in front, in the foreground. So it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna be right up close so you can really see that he's coming up. And then our Voyager is off, kind of floating in the middle, the distance out here. So he's gonna be a little bit smaller on the horizon, you, just a subtle little ship so you can see that he's there. And then our sea creature is gonna be bigger in our foreground. So we're gonna go in and do all of that. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start with a bigger brush. I think I'm gonna start with this guy. I am gonna be, you guys can use your watercolors to do this. I'm gonna use acrylics mostly because I'm almost out of blue and I'm out of purple. And those are the two colors that I wanna add. So I'm gonna kinda of use these like watercolor and I'm gonna dilute them with water. So you guys can use watercolor for this or acrylic, either one. And I'm actually gonna zoom in here a little bit closer now that I'm gonna be painting so you guys can really see what I'm doing. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna wet my big brush. I'm gonna get it in the water. I'm going to, I'm gonna mix a little bit of my dark blue and this kind of rich dark purple that I have over here together maybe a little more purple. I'm just gonna kind of play with it until it gets the color that I want. Ooh, I really like that. It's like a really rich kind of, mm, that's pretty. I think I'm gonna use that. Maybe a little bit more blue. I don't know, I might kind of go back and forth between these two colors. You can add a little bit more blue, a little bit more purple, kind of mix it up. So <laughs> I'm gonna add, again, more water so that it's almost like the consistency of a watercolor because I want it to be a wash. I don't want the paint going on thick. All right, so now I have that and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start on my top corners and just gently, ooh, that's a nice, rich, pretty color. I'm gonna just gently flow from left to right across the page. And as I go down, it's gonna slowly, the color, the richness, the pigment is gonna dissipate and that's what we want. So it's gonna be darker at the top and get lighter as we go down. So now I'm actually going to rinse my brush off and just use water and go back over what I just did and slowly dilute that paint and pull it down. See how it kind of fades as we go down across the paper. And that is so beautiful. Ooh, I love that actually. Now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get a little bit more blue and add that just on my corners up here really pull in some of that darker, rich color on the corners. <clears throat> Maybe go across the top one more time. So you guys can kind of add as much or as little as you want to to get the look that you want. There's no right or wrong way to do it. This is where your creative flow and your image in your mind and your picture and what you want it to look like, the, the inspiration that you have in your mind, that's where that comes in. So it can be whatever you guys want. I think I'm actually gonna even make it a little bit darker. I'm also gonna add this color to my water. So I'm gonna go in with the same color that I did up there, go in on my horizon line. Oh yes, there we go. And trace across where my water starts and bring in this nice rich color down here as well. So you can do as many washes as you'd like. You can make it pretty dark, as long as it doesn't get too dark where you're not gonna be able to see your black silhouettes. But I think we have plenty of room to work with that. So I'm gonna go in one more time here. I'm just gonna kinda of keep layering until I get that rich color that I want, that beautiful. And on the water, as you can see, if you go in, you can actually leave your strokes across. It kind of creates almost like an ocean flow feel in your water. I'm really liking this. This is really cool. All right, so go in and Get 
some just plain water on my brush. Go through one more time. I am just absolutely loving the way this is working. All right. So I'm thinking my water is looking pretty beautiful here. I might even, I'm gonna just barely, we don't need very much, just barely add a little bit of black. That was probably even too much to my purpley blue that I have here. And maybe add a little bit more blue, a little bit more purple. So I am just make that color a little bit more rich and go in, ooh, it just creates such a stormy, more dramatic feel on that horizon line. My water, so we got this, all right. <clears throat> all right, now I'm gonna kind of go in and I'm gonna do the same thing up here on my corners. I'm gonna add more darkness up here and kind of work my way down. I'm gonna add a little bit more purple so that it's not so black. Go in. And the thing with the, ooh, I love that. The thing with these washes, it's still light enough that you can see all of those cool details showing through from when we did our splatter technique and wet on wet and letting the paint kind of like just naturally move across the page and create these designs that look like different fluctuations in the sky or clouds or nebulas in space, you know, whatever direction you want to take it, you can still see those details showing through, but you're just darkening up that color and making it pop a little bit more and giving it a really kind of like stormy uh, feel. So that's going to be our goal here is to just kind of like Add a little bit more blue and you could just play with those colors if it comes out a little bit too purple add some blue if it comes out a little bit too blue add some whatever you guys want to do there we go so now I'm just gonna kind of work this down again and add just some water do a light wash I want to darken this area up as well but just not as much as the top so you can go across the whole thing all the way down to your horizon line but you do want these top corners of your sky to be darker and the top of your waterline to be a little bit darker. <clears throat> you can even go in now and do some of that technique where you dropped it in and kind of let it go. You can add more of that on top. Do your wet on wet and kind of let that trickle out. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Do some over here. Add some more of those details on top here. And just keep building it, building it and building it until it's how you want. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. Now I'm just going to kind of pull some of that color in here. So I'm doing a combination of washes across the page with a really light diluted watercolor and also kind of doing the saturated color on my brush and dabbing it so that it melts across the page on its own and creates these designs. So I think I'm, we're almost completely done with our background and ready to move on to the next thing. We're gonna let it dry a little bit. And uh, let's see here. So I think I'm just gonna add a little bit more dark on my edges here. Some blue. Really kind of darken in that edge. Okay. 
Okay, how are we doing? Is everybody feeling good? <clears throat> I know you all are so creative and do such a wonderful job with your watercolors. So I'm very, very, very pumped and looking forward to seeing what you have going. I can't wait, you guys. You all have such creative ideas and you're so talented. I can't wait to see what you're working on. All right. I think, you know, I keep saying we're good and then I keep adding to it because I'm having fun. Hopefully you guys are having fun too here. I'm just gonna add just a few, just a couple more dark little details on the edge here to create that like kind of night stormy feel. And then I really am gonna, ooh, I like that. See, I went a little bit darker. I experimented with going darker and I absolutely love that. In fact, I'm going to, I think I'm gonna add more over here. We're just building it up, building that background, layering. The next part that what we're going to do is really just going to make this go to the next level. It's going to be very exciting. We are going to add stars once this dries a little bit. Oh yeah, here we go. So I did a little bit of wet on wet here. Oh, look at that. We did a little bit of wet on wet. It's getting a little bit dark. I think it's getting cloudy. I'm going to turn on my lights here. Caitlin. All right. We are looking good here. I think. We are going to let this dry. And then we're going to move on <coughs> to the next phase. I am going to add little bit of a just barely some of this dark color from up here along our water here. right oh yeah see how that really just tied it all together I added some of this dark color that I have going on up here right along the edge of where the top of the water meets the bottom of the sky and just gently let that color blend into what we already had here Pull it down. All right, my background is officially done. How about you guys? How's your background? Good? All right, we're gonna let that dry. <clears throat> While we're letting that dry, I'm gonna go in and get ready for my next part of my project, which is going to be making sure I have my white paint, my acrylic paint, and sort of a little bit of a smaller, like medium sized brush. I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna get water. I'm also gonna dilute my white down. Not quite as runny as watercolor, but maybe let, well, a little bit more wet than pancake batter, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just add some water so that it's not super thick, but it's not as soft and diluted as watercolor, okay? Once we get that nice kind of creamy consistency to the paint, we are good to go. I might add just a little bit more water. Okay, there we go. All right, now this part might get a little bit messy, so definitely make sure you have some plastic down and that you have like clothes that you maybe don't care about getting a few splatters on or that you're not near anything of your parents that they don't want to get paint on. So what we're going to do is we're going to flick white gently. We're going to tap the brush on our fingers to create stars. Okay. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more water and I'm, ah, I just got see, and you can like tap the, the brush on your finger. 
And look, I'm starting to create stars in my sky here, which I really, you can actually go in and do it by hand too, if you'd like. You can go in and just gently do, you can do teeny tiny, barely touch it so that there's like little tiny dots or you can do bigger ones. <clears throat> now my paint is still a little bit wet. That's fine. Um, if you guys want to let it dry completely, that's okay. But I'm just going to go ahead and start. And actually, because it's a different kind of paint and this paint is a little bit thicker, you still get the big dots, but the outside of it kind of gently blends into the background, which actually gives it a really cool effect. So it's kind of working for us, actually. So I'm going to just get a little bit more water there. And I'm going to flick. Whoops, I got flipsy. I did get some. I don't want to get any down here on my ocean so I am gonna wipe that off try to be really careful do it very gently we just want it in our sky we don't want any in our water we just want it up here so if you have to like I said you can do it by hand um, it actually seems to be working better for me if I get a little bit more water in the paint and I'm gonna do some bigger and some really small ones starting to look like space here, huh? So we just need some teeny tiny little ones. I'm actually gonna get an even smaller itty bitty little brush and just do like some tiny, we wanna do some like little teeny tiny ones and some bigger ones. We don't want them to all be the same size. In some areas there's gonna be more clusters and other areas there's gonna be just a couple. Also, if you guys want to, you could even go in uh, <clears throat> and kind of, maybe on this one, I have this big chunk up here, kind of pull out, make like a big star like this. Take that little paint cluster and pull it out and make somewhat of like a constellation. Looks pretty cool. You can do a couple of those. See how it's really just starting to create such a whimsical, neat feel. We have such depth. We have like all of these rich fluctuations in the sky and transitions going on. We have our stars. So it really just feels like this vast night sky with our Voyager traveling across the sea. I'm really loving this. I think it's so beautiful. We could make this our North Star, maybe, you know? You guys have heard of the North, North Star? Um, since he's voyaging across the sea and it's a seascape, a lot of the time voyagers use the sky as a compass. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm thinking, I'm feeling pretty good about I'm gonna add maybe like a couple more clusters over here. And some teeny tiny ones over here. Teeny tiny, teeny tiny, teeny tiny, teeny tiny. tiny. almost ready this one's a little bit big I'm gonna go and you can use your paper towel and gently take some of them out if you accidentally did more than you meant to there you go kind of creates a cool effect see how I just dabbed it and they're still there but they look a little bit more muted you can do that if you'd like in fact I'm gonna do that on a couple different little spots here We are looking good here. What do you guys think? Let's just go ahead and 
play with your sky until it's how you want it. And then when you guys are ready, <clears throat> you're gonna go ahead and put those brushes down. And we're gonna go in and sketch in. This is getting dry enough now here on the lower sky horizon and down here that we can use our pencil. And we can go ahead and sketch in. So I'm gonna make sure that this is still going. I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna move this over so you guys can see really good. All right, so we wanna put our Voyager right on top of this skyline. Whoops, started to leak down, so I'm gonna go. Um, so I wanna put my Voyager just off center, maybe not right in the middle, but maybe just off center. You can put them over here or over here. And your ship can look however you want it to. I'm just gonna keep mine really simple. And we want it to be pretty small, like I said, cause he's off in the distance, but he's in the foreground, or I'm sorry, in the middle ground. So I'm just gonna gently do like a real simple little boat shape right here. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add some sails for interest here. You know, like our pirate ships with our big sails. We can kind of put a couple of those in. We can kind of do, and then our, our posts coming up here. I'm gonna put a couple of these. There we go. Our ship is really coming together here. And then our guy down here. So we just want like a, a real rough, loose sketch that we're gonna go over with our paint. So we have our ship in. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you'll be able to see it more when I go in <coughs> with the black paint. And then down here, same thing. I'm gonna go in and our sea creature is gonna be this big, kind of creepy legged, almost like a squid or an octopus trying to come up and get our Voyager, right? So we want these big limbs coming up kind of look like octopus. So I'm going to start by doing one big one right here. And then maybe one over here. And just kind of like stagger them, just make it look really cool and kind of intertwine like he's trying to get up to the top, grabby with his fingers. And then I'm going to do this over here as well. There we go. I'm liking this a lot. I think I need one more maybe over here to balance it out. So you can kind of play around with that. But I'm liking this. I'm also going to add some like kind of octopus style tentacles coming off in a few different places just to add some interest and just some, so that you can really get the feel that it's like a creature trying to reach up with his hands toward our Voyager. And once we get some of these laid in here, we're gonna just take our uh, medium, well, actually a pretty small, we want a pretty small brush for our ship. I'm gonna actually switch back to this small brush that I use and make sure that you clean it really good if you use your same brushes to get all the white off because you want it to just be solid black. And you don't need to add any water unless your acrylic paint is super thick, then add a little bit of water, but we want it to cover really well. And then I'm gonna go in on the top of my sketch very carefully, we just want it to be silhouetted. I'm gonna go in very carefully and put black paint in where my Voyager is and color in his ship. And his sails. <clears throat> Look at that, isn't that looking awesome? 
All right, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna gently put in this like, the lines for the, the sails. And then I'm gonna go in and do our flags. And the flags, you kind of round the edges a little bit and it gives it the feel that it's like catching the wind. You kind of make like a half moon shape on the side. And that's what gives it that really like neat sailing uh, pirate ship kind of feel, Voyager feel. So take your time with this, you know, just add your details, make sure you really try to be careful and have a clean, crisp silhouette image. And again, wait as long as you need to so that your background's dry so that it doesn't um, mix in or bleed with the background at all. For our sky, we wanted it to kind of have that, that look, but with this, we want our clean, clean, clean lines on top in our foreground here, okay? So see how it's kind of starting to come together? I'm gonna do one sail here and three sails across the middle. You guys can do it however you want. I can't wait to see what you come up with. I know it's gonna be really neat. Isn't this fun? We have this idea in our head and now we get to bring it to life. Whoops, yeah, I accidentally, okay, that sail's gonna be a little bit bigger because this paint doesn't really come off very well, so I'm gonna improvise here. Just kind of make that one kind of extend down a little bit. We can work with that. Now I'm gonna go in and add one more over here. Actually, I'm gonna do a small one over here. And another small one here. I'm gonna kind of layer them. I'm gonna do three, two, and one. Teeny tiny one at the top. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm gonna go in and connect any like add some like uh, string lines throughout so that it really has that feel that we're on a ship. Those lines connecting down just gently throughout. How cool is that coming together? And then I wanna go in and just kind of barely gesture that there's like a person here sailing our Voyager here in the front across the seas. All right, so here we go. We've got it coming together now. Sailors here, all right. All right, we have our ship dialed in. See how he just looks like he's off in the distance there, cruising, voyaging across the sea. Now we're on our final step, you guys, which is to go in and paint in our sea creature, and then we are done. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna start with the biggest tentacle right here in the middle and just follow my lines really carefully here. So I would recommend using a smaller brush for the outside to keep those lines really clean, but then once you get the outside done, you can go in with a bigger brush and fill in those spaces, okay? So I'll show you guys, I'm gonna do this here. How are we doing? Mimi and Maya and Jack and Lucy. <clears throat> All right, we're getting so close. I'm getting so excited. All righty, here we go, so close. Just 
So as you can see, I have my basic structure and I'm gonna go in and add kind of these little tentacles here on a few spots, suction cups, like maybe here and here and here, a couple over here, a couple here, just wherever you guys pick that you think might be interesting. And then like, <clears throat> now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a bigger brush, maybe like a medium size and fill in this whole space because this is our silhouette, right? So silhouettes are one big dark area, like a black a contrast that pops out, stands out on the page, right? So that's what we want to do here. Let's fill this in in our foreground. Real gentle with this. Wow, look at this. Oh my gosh. I am very, very, very pumped on how my creature is coming out in my scene. I hope you guys are too. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see them. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my medium to small brush one more time and just add any, like I might pull this one up to where it's almost touching the surface. And this one, just add like a little thing on top and cut, make sure that I'm completely filled in down here, that everything looks the way that I want it to. So you can add any more details that you guys want to do. Um, feel free to add to it as much as you'd like to, whether you want to <clears throat> add details on your creature. You can go in with some like lighter colors on top to add details if you want. Not a lot, because we do want it to be silhouetted, but if you wanted to take some some like light gray and just kind of like create a little bit of like a highlight on the suction cup. I'll show you guys. You could do that, but I kind of like it just silhouetted. You could go in and add more stars or any more like details in your sky that you want to do but I think we are pretty much done so we have completed our voyage our voyager seascape our mixed media watercolor and acrylic paint piece and I am really excited about our picture and I'm super excited to see what you guys have made and I hope that you've been having fun with this today just want to make sure that you guys can see this up close here Gonna zoom out a little bit. There it is. All right, you guys, well have fun. It was awesome being here with you today and I can't wait to see you guys next week and see your projects. Good work. See you soon, bye.